Hi everybody, Jimmy again. I'm going to talk about CSS some more and I want to use one of the most interesting sites for a web designer to check out, CSS Zen Garden. So I mentioned before that CSS changes the look and feel of a page and has no effect on the content. And this site is the sort of cream of the crop of that effect. In other words, the content on the page, the words, the paragraphs, the images, actually the images are a different story, but the, especially the actual words in this case, they're not going to change, okay? So the actual words, what the, the content they want to deliver to the reader is unaffected by the CSS. But as I go through these different designs, you'll notice that the exact same page, exact same content, but the look and feel has changed. The rule with CSS Zen Garden, they're allowed to alter the, the boxes, the graphics that sit in the background, the fonts, the background images, uh, like not just the background images here, but like the actual background behind the body. They're allowed to change anything they want, but not the words. So the HTML file actually stays exactly the same. The original content's never altered. The only thing that's changed is the CSS. So as you go through this site and look at the different designs, they actually give you the CSS file. If you want, you can take a look at it. Sometimes it's pretty advanced stuff and it generally is beyond my uh, level of understanding, but maybe you guys are smarter than me. So I picked another one there. Let's try another one. So you can see that the look and feel and the font and the colors, everything changes, but the actual content itself, never actually changes. It's very clever. And of course you can notice that uh, not just the design but the designers are linked on the site and you can go check out their stuff. Some of the stuff is absolutely beautiful and um, regardless of how you feel about the look or feel of a particular page, what they're able to do with this stuff is remarkable. And all they have to do, did I pick the first one? All they have to do is change the CSS file and the entire page alters. So in this one, they actually notice that these images don't move. And as I scroll through the page, the rest stays there. That's very cool. So basically, this is a, a way for uh, CSS designers or HTML writers or web designers in general to show off what they're capable of doing. And then there's a, a community process for what gets posted to this page. They guarantee that their content is HTML, like the latest and greatest, and that they don't break any rules. So they have to stay within the web standards that I talked about before to get this to work. Uh, CSS in Garden is very cool. <coughs> okay. Now for the next cool thing I want to show you. Uh, everybody has a group project to work on, and you may be have already looked at the rubric and you'll notice that I'm asking you to have CSS applied for your page. You don't have to write the CSS though. So I'm going to demonstrate something here along the lines of what I expect people to do for their group project. Here's my my all about me page on Peak of All Peas, okay? And this I'm very happy with the way this page looks, like the background and the uh, image in the back stays there as I scroll and I like that the boxes that I've used have uh, a transparent kind of effect and I like the font that's on there and guess what I did not write any of the CSS for this page even though I did put my own picture here and I put my own picture in the background I didn't actually write any of the uh, CSS for this as a matter of fact most of the HTML I didn't write either I got it from a site that has free CSS templates or HTML5 and CSS3. So brand new standards compliant code that you can use for free. The only rule is you've got a link to the place where you get your stuff down at the bottom. And there are lots of places to get free CSS templates, but I picked this one because it's got HTML5 and CSS3. So it's latest and greatest. Some of the uh, templates that you can find online for free are HTML4 and this has latest and greatest stuff. The cool thing is you download the template and it comes with all of the images, all of the JavaScript and all of the HTML and all you have to do is fill in the blanks. So notice what I did here on my Jimmy's portfolio page, I actually linked to the original file, here it is, original design down at the bottom. So this is the file that I downloaded originally. It came with this and I went into the HTML with my text editor here, I'll show you. Here's what I wrote. 
So I actually opened up the file that I downloaded from their website in my text editor and I changed around some of the content. So instead of title saying Scenic Photo 2, I made it say Web Portfolio colon JN0074. And where it said, you know, I just changed around some of the pieces and parts that are on here, including the menus. You'll notice that the way this thing works, and a lot of them are like this, they've got menus built in. So I, and including a drop down menu, you don't have to write any of this code. You can have it for free. And this is actually a lot of people when I do this in these classes say, well, isn't this cheating? To be honest, what I'm trying to get you to be able to do is take code that already exists and make it work for your purposes. If you were stealing code, I would be definitely upset about it. But here's a, an example of the kind of thing that web designers, especially library and web designers, are having to do. They're given a template or boilerplate code or some program that writes the HTML for them and they have to generate the content and that's basically what I'm asking you to do here. So you are allowed to find templates on this website that meet the needs of your group project, download the HTML, make it work with your group project and post it up on your web, your uh, peak of all piece stuff and you can actually use the layouts, the design, the HTML, the CSS from these templates and it will actually meet the requirements of the group project. Okay, so um, I'll send you a link to CSS in Garden to this site and then the third one I'm going to mention which isn't quite as good but is pretty cool because you can uh, limit your um, you can sort of filter through some of the results. It's called opendesigns.org and they have uh, open source, Creative Commons, or um, even, I guess, public domain layouts and templates that you can use. Some of them are really good. Some of them are really bad. Some of them are hard to work with in terms of um, a pro group project, but it's searchable. So there are a lot of ads on these pages, so be careful about that. And make sure that if you find a particular layout that you follow the rules for their attribution, like the css3templates.co.uk, their rule was, and I read this in the actual file, since it's a Creative Commons attribution license, you've got to, down at the bottom, link to where you got it. So I did. Um, that's the rule. If you're using a, a Creative Commons product, You've got to follow whatever their license is. And in this case, it's attribution. So you've got to attribute it. Design from, that's all you have to do. Okay? So I didn't actually write any of this HTML. I stole it, or I guess I borrowed it from that template. And then I made it meet my own needs. And it looks really, really good, in my opinion. So, like, I'm, the menu, even though this is not really something I plan to use, I wanted to demonstrate how you can take a template and make it work without a whole lot of time and energy. I think I spent maybe 15 minutes editing the HTML, put it up on the Peak of Volpe site, and then I've got code ready to go. Um, what I would warn you about open designs though, some of the designs are big and represent like a, a really big website with lots of menus and a search box and a calendar. So it's possible to pick a design that has too many moving parts. So when you're looking around at the different templates, Make sure it's going to meet with your group's approval. Everybody should look at it and you all decide that this is really, really good. Remember that if there's code you don't need or you don't want, you can either just throw it away, like literally cut it out of the page, or you can comment stuff out and leave it in there. So if one of the people working on a page thinks, oh, I don't need this search box or I don't want this calendar in there you can just comment it out but leave the actual code in there for the other people to see or if you want to delete it just throw it away so um, this stuff is really really awesome and there's definitely uh, stuff in them that's beyond the scope of our course like here's a chunk of uh, programming that's definitely beyond where we are but it doesn't matter. It's all you really need to do is take it and uh, use it for your own needs. So if something's really beyond the pale and you don't understand it, ask. Or if you feel like it's too complicated, maybe pick a design that has less stuff to it. Um, don't be afraid to play with this code. As long as you follow the rules and attribute it correctly, it is yours to use. Okay, cool. That uh, should be a real time saver and anxiety remover for your group project. Find a template that works the way you want it, 
take it and apply it to your site. Good luck.